Hi everyone, it's Floor Extraordinaire, and I'm back with some more Aura History Untold news, and as the game is kind of coming into the forefront of 4X strategy gaming news, uh, and there's not a, a lot of that going on at the moment, but kind of as this game is making headway, uh, there are more revealing details coming out. Namely, we just had a new screenshot for the game, and this screenshot is unique because it really shows uh, just a regular screenshot taken from gameplay. It wasn't really pre-selected, I don't believe. Um, it was just, I think, accidentally leaked or shown at an Xbox outlet. So I'm not sure about the specific details behind how we got the screenshot, but I do know there are a few interesting pieces of information we can kind of gather from it, uh, much more so than the previous kind of images and videos that the developers have shown us. Really quickly though, the only reason I was able to find out about this was because user Mott Eshu posted it, so big thank you to them. Uh, and I was also on the Play Our History Untold subreddit, so this is where I found this information. If you want to find it, I'll post a link in the description below. But anyway, getting on to the game, uh, we can see right away that we have the Greek civilization, and there are a lot of interesting kind of things you can nitpick from here. Um, first of all, there is a interesting not hex-based uh, grid system that the game employs. Uh, unlike any other uh, historical 4X strategy game, Humankind, all of these Civ games, this game, I mean, Civ 4 used squares, but Besides the point, this game seems to use unique territories. Uh, even Humankind has a similar kind of hex-based system. Uh, they at least use some kinds of tiles. This doesn't look to be the case. It looks like there's more um, natural occurring regions, and I'm not sure how the city is growing here, but we can see from here the tooltip that there are a few resources that are kind of in common with Humankind and all of the historical uh, 4X strategy simulator games or the sandboxes. Uh, that is, it has a population. You also have a research yield some kind of screen i think this is all the technologies you've researched this is also the food yield i believe and then you have money or currency there's some kind of lumber resource and then there's also a stonework resource so the last two definitely important for building your districts and kind of expanding your territorial borders and all of that fun stuff we can also gather that there are multiple resources per tile for example we have sheep we have some kind of fur i'm not sure if this is beavers but it seems to just be some kind of general or broad type of fur that you can kind of harvest there also seems to be barrels i this may be some wood resource i'm not too sure i don't know if there's a storage resource that's separate maybe this terrain type has a lot of extra space just for districts not sure at all what that means there's also some maize or corn resource and that seems to be all there's like wheat and then there's some i don't know if this is wine or whatnot uh, maybe pottery but uh there are some river tiles too intersecting with the landscape there and then there's of course the main city here so uh, if you guys have any ideas what the barrels could be please let me know um, but otherwise this is a fairly straightforward screenshot and then to the right, we have a text screen. They are researching basic agriculture. And from the tooltips here, this looks like an alert system. Uh, and I just wanted to note really quickly, it seems like the devs are leaning very heavily on their Civ 5 influence. If you just look back and compare this game to some of the early Civ 5 screenshots, there are definitely a lot of overlaps. This seems to also be employing the happiness system, which I am kind of mixed about. Um, basically in Civ 5, this was based on the luxury resources you had, and it really insisted or forced players is really to have a tall empire so that meant four to five cities instead of the civ six play style which is a much wider focused empire um, there also seems to be some kind of furs so i'm not sure how these interact it seems like there's multiple different types of resources and then really quickly to cap this off without wasting too much of your guys's time it looks like there is a building q-tip there is some kind of tool or maybe this is the army builder there is some law or civic system then there's also a portrait i'm assuming this is referring to your leader and then this may be the dip diplomacy screen so it seems like it is very similar again to the early civ 5 and civ 6 uh, prototypes so we'll kind of see how that goes especially with the uh, pop-up icons here so not too much information out on the game but i really do like how things are progressing i think the one thing that wins me over with this screenshot is the unique um, hex grid i think humankind has kind of spoiled me uh, much more so than civ 6 with dynamic uh, tiles and hexes that don't really confine you to a certain uh, boundary or world space so i'm really interested to, interested to see how this game kind of um, goes along with the idea of city building and how it expands on it because at the moment it seems like it is going for some interesting ideas it seems to be more focused on city building so we'll just have to see how more releases as they are kind of going forward how that progresses and develops
But if you enjoyed this short impromptu video, please check out my Aura History Untold playlist, which I am quickly growing with new information and content about Aura History Untold. I've covered some developer interviews in the past and also some individual analyses or analyses if you like that. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Four Extraordinaire, and I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. All right, peace.